Thank you guys for attending this session. Uh, usually we always cover some sort of technical analysis or some fundamentals or something to do with the uh, buying and selling or how you can improve yourself. But today, uh, tonight's session is something uh, different. It's something that, um, you know, um, I also brought Platinum Sachs on with me, right? Um, because he's also experienced in this and he will help me along the way. And just certain topics that I wanted to touch up on, right? T is also here with me. If you guys have any questions for him, he's got a lot of experience in his life. I learned many things from him. But uh, trading psychology, right? Uh, many books have written, been written on this. A lot of authors or big traders talk about this. There's a huge reason behind it, right? And many of you guys go through some uh, um, psychological decisions every day in the market that have nothing to do with technicals or fundamentals. It's just your own decision making. Sometimes looking at certain price action or whatever. It may be that may be making you make a certain decision, right? Uh, first of all, trading psychology, what exactly is this? Uh, what part of trading does it account for? This is basically the emotional component. It's the emotional part of yourself, your brain, which helps you in decision making when you're placing a trade or when you're in the trade or when you're trying to enter and exit your trade, okay? That's where it is. And uh, first thing that I want to start off with, uh, I wrote some notes. Right, uh, wrote many notes in fact. So I'm just gonna go um, as I was um, going with. Now, if you're a new in trading, first of all, if you're somebody that's new in trading, sometimes when we go to a casino or when we go somewhere, we usually have something called beginner's luck, right? We usually have something that's called beginner's luck. And you might be hitting trades left and right. You might have so many big winners in a row. You might have so many losers in a row, which is not beginner's luck, obviously. But then that, makes you greedy, it, uh, it brings in greed in your brain, it brings in many things in your brain that you're gonna be right every time. And in MSL, we do have some uh, new traders which are part of our, um, our organization. Congrats, you guys have made amazing gains in the last few weeks or the last few months. The only thing, and any experienced trader would tell you, you know, that I've known um, your performance is that you protect your gains, right? Now in here, obviously uh, the reason we say this over and over is because some of you guys only experience this when you, some people come in here in the market and they only experience this part of the market. Okay, they only experience this part of the market, but they don't experience this or they don't experience this. And by the time they experience this, they go in too heavy into positions and then they start giving up all their gains. And now because you're so used to making so much money in your first few trades, you think you want to make that money every single time. You stop valuing the money, right? I mean, uh, you take it for granted. Even though you might be making three, four hundred dollars on your job, but now all of a sudden you're used to making thousands of dollars in a day for a few weeks, then you keep wanting the same thing over and over again. All right. It's uh, so beginner's luck is when you start thinking that you're going to make gains continuously, right? You ex expect gain on every trade and you believe you will always be right. And if one day you don't make any gains, all of a sudden, you don't you feel like you're not making enough money, even though you might be up huge on in your account, right? Throughout the year, uh, I've met so many beginner uh, new traders in our MSL. Many are still with us, and uh, you guys made a lot of gains. But then you were expecting those same gains every day, right? Uh, so if you're in this uh, right now, and if you're a new trader and you're listening and you're making a lot of gains, please protect your gains. Understand the markets. If you're making money every day, it's not going to happen. It's reality of the markets. Uh, Darsh, did you want to add anything on this with me? Hey, Ricky. I mean, uh, you know, first of all, thanks for bringing me on. I haven't prepared or anything like that. I'm just going to, you know, uh, share with you kind of the everyday, right? I mean, the things you're talking about, no matter how experienced you get, um, there's always going to be challenges, right? It's just like anything. Um, and as far as, you know, everything that you've said, it makes a lot of sense. And I think something that, you know, I would add to that is people, you know, everybody who end to begin trading, they have a certain goal in mind, right? Like you got to ask yourself, you know, why did you start trading? And for most people, including myself, you know, when I started, because I want to make money, right? So usually people are doing, or they start trading for the wrong reasons, which is to make money, right? I mean, the idea of, trading is to make money but if you're trading to make money and that's your only goal then most likely you're going to fail right because your foundation the the point of view that you're operating from is not 
the way trading works, right? Um, and the main thing that comes down to it is, you know, a lot of people that are newer, even people that have been doing this for a while, but, you know, they just, their results are mixed, right? Sometimes they make a lot of money, sometimes they lose a lot of money. And the biggest difference between the people who make money versus the people who are kind of all over the place or maybe don't make money is the fact that, again, you know, they, they have certain dollar amounts in mind maybe or certain goals they're trying to hit. But, you know, I think the right way to think about all of these things would be from the perspective that, you know, trading is about having an edge. Okay, so first of all, if you don't have an edge, then you're basically doing everything backwards. Like, for example, you know, I'll give you an example. When I was at the firm, what, like, what's the point of, you know, having this firm, right? Like, why would somebody start this firm? The reason why is my boss, you know, he's been trading for like 30 years at the time. And he'd been trading these interest rate futures. And over the years, he had, you know, figured out a way to price these bonds that we were trading a certain way. And that was our edge. And that's, that's what we did, right? Like that was our only focus. And then yes, position sizing and things like that all come into play. But the idea is you gotta have an edge, right? And whatever that edge is, you gotta have something, you know, something to operate around, right? You can't just come in and, you know, buy something or sell something or because you made a lot of money, you're doing one thing. And if you lost a lot of money, you're doing another thing. So having a framework to operate within, right? So I think those are some of the important things I would add to your points, Ricky. Right. Thank you, Darsh. Um, that was very helpful. Um, now, two things that I really want to touch upon, right, uh, which actually uh, are a big part of trading psychology is greed and fear. Now, greed, you guys all understand what it means. Few things what I want to um, touch. One is your desire for wealth, right? Your desire for wealth, is it reasonable? Now, if you're placing a trade for $1,000, right? If you're placing a trade for $1,000, how much are you expecting for it? Are you playing a leap? Are you playing, playing a daily call? Are you trading equity? Are you trading a big name? What exactly is it, right? And then obviously, this is your want. How much are you looking to make? Now, if you're starting with, the, with a 10K cash account, and you're saying that, you know what, I want to double this account in one month. Well, in order to double your account, do you have the risk profile to lose the entire 10K, right? Because now you're, you want to gamble with your money. People take people have taken 10K to over 100K in a month. It happens all the time. It happens in our group almost every month. Somebody turns 10K into 100K. Recently, last week, Ricky K, 10K into 100K on Amazon, all right? Um, so your desire for wealth, and then your desire for wealth, for greed also kicks in. Then you start doing high-risk trades right as a trader if you're greedy right when greed kicks in you have to uh, you know the, the part of this session is understanding yourself recognizing yourself as a trader all right after this session can we help you recognize a little bit of yourself as a trader that you are um so you start taking these high risk trades and what does the high risk trades um, equal right more chances of being wrong okay which also messes up with your mentality and in this all of a sudden uh, when fomo kicks in Right. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, uh, if you if you're facing any of these points which I'm writing down down, that's part of greed. It's risky for you. It's not good. It needs to be fixed. Right. Uh, buying when something keeps going up, and you believe that it's going to keep going up. You don't even look at no fundamentals, no technicals. You're not looking at the news. You don't even know why the stock is going up. You're just buying in because it's fear of missing out. All right. Another thing is staying in trades longer than usual. Now let's uh, go, so desire for wealth I uh, said, now high risk trade, what would be a high risk trade, right? Let's say for example, um, uh, okay, let's go, let's open up Amazon here. We've been playing Amazon a lot, right? I'll remove all my drawings here. Now Amazon, even this making this bull flag here, it's not clear that which direction it may go. On a longer term basis, if you're buying further time or equity, fine, you might be safe. But if you're playing weeklies here, understand one thing, the premiums are jacked. Now you think that Amazon's gonna go up or somebody else is buying or selling, I don't know what it may be. And you're putting in a lot of money and then Amazon does this for two days. Even though you entered Amazon here at the closing price on Friday, you did not exit. You think it's gonna keep going up. You're right now down. If you entered Amazon here near 3520, even though Amazon trading up because of, you lost a lot of uh, money in it, right? Without confirmation is, 
it's actually a high risk trade when you have no confirmation. So wait for proper levels on this. FOMO, fear of buying when something keeps going up. UPST, for example, it kept going up. A lot of people probably got caught up here, right? Uh, now, when this company was going up, I missed the entire run. There's a simple reason. I missed this entire run. It's simple because I did not know enough about the company. I'll be honest with you guys. I've been in the market for 10 years. I follow a lot of companies. Uh, LB knows a lot about this company. He looked up LC. He nailed it. And he told me, buy LC, buy LC. I did not buy it because I don't know. I have not looked into the company. Why am I going to have fear of missing out, right? A lot of guys probably got caught up here. And now the stock is down. It screws up, screws, screws you up mentally, right? Uh, staying in trades longer than usual. Now, Ford, for example, I think it was a reasonable trade for me. Uh, we rode this thing all the way from here to all the way here. Scaled out on points because we were in options. Now, I wanted to stay in Ford here as well. But then I asked myself, would it be wise? I, I was in my leaps from $12 to 20 bucks. Does it make sense for me to stay longer, long enough? I made my money. Had I stayed long enough, I would have lost premium on my leaps, right? I'm just on this side of this movement. But I took my uh, trades and I moved on. So greed is something that uh, you guys need to uh, work on, right? Uh, if you have it and uh, letting your winners, another thing, um, so this falls in this point right here, right? Letting winners turn into loser. One of the things that I learned from T, if he's in a trade, right? That he still does it. Boogie can agree with me. LB can agree with me. We see him live all the time in action. If he's in a trade, and you guys see this on um, um, Discord as well, if he enters a trade, let's say 80 cents, and it goes to a dollar, he makes sure that trade does not go below 80 cents. Maybe 75 cents, so he'll take a five cent loss, but he makes sure once, like, you know, very disciplined, he will not let his winner turn into a loser no matter what, right? A five cent, he'll take a loss maybe, but once you're up in a trade and it goes against you, for example, Walmart, now many people probably held because I held or some held, some took their profits, we bought Walmart here, 155 calls, right? Mambo, you are, if you're listening, you were in with me. We were up. I called one from $1.30, $1.70, $1.80. We were up nice. As soon as it came back to the entry price, did you let that trade run or did you hold through this entire move down? Personally, I held because I believe uh, uh, for my trade, I for options, most of my trades is either zero or I either or hit them. That's why I manage my trades mostly. But uh, you should have stopped out here then. Right. I mean, if it, now if this trade hurt you, if you were in, it went to zero, then you just did not manage it right. It was up huge. Why would you let it go below your entry? Just stop out. Right. Uh, I do want to cover more on the greed part, but uh, I'll bring uh, Darsh on. Um, Darsh, uh, any um, points on this? I yeah, know. Again, you know, I think that covers a lot of things. Um, for me, you know, I keep things simple. Right. Anything that you do, whether it's trading, you know, psychology, whatever, you know, if you're working out at, at the gym or you want to be good at something, whatever it is, you know, X, Y, Z, you got to keep it simple. The more components you add to something, the, you know, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to do that thing properly because there's so much and your brain can only do so many things at a time, right? So you got to have, for me, it's just, you know, a few fundamental things, right? And one of them, first of all, first and foremost is, you know, there's many things moving. I have tons of things I watch. I've, I probably watch more things than all of you guys combined, okay? Like my watch list that I have, sometimes I have like 200 names on them. I see everything. I only maybe trade like three, four, sometimes one thing out of that. You know, I'm just looking for opportunities. And once an opportunity comes, I make sure that, you know, whatever I'm taking, there's a setup there, right? If there's no setup, then there's nothing for me to do. You know, I mean, Tesla, you know, I wanted to buy it, but I missed it. You know, I had platform issues. So be it, right? I missed the move. That That's it. There's nothing more to it, right? And then the rest of it comes down to, you know, what Ricky just mentioned, you know, management, right? How you manage the trade. And for me, it's very similar too, right? I mean, once, once you're up, you know, I tend to scale out because let's say you buy something for five bucks, right? And you think it's going to go to $10. And sure, it's possible it could go to $10. And let's say it's at $8 now, right? And you're like, oh, you know, it's it's definitely going to go to $10. So I'm just going to wait. But then from $8, it goes back below your entry, right? So my rule of thumb is, you know, let's say I have a $10 target. If it gets to 70%, you know, it's, it's not exact science, by the way. But if it gets to close to 70% of my target, guess what? You scale out and you reduce your risk. And on whatever you have left, 
you tighten up your stops in a way that if it was to turn against you, now you're not going to let it turn into a loser, right? And that's what it's all about because if you do those things right, then at the end of the day, you know, and when I say at the end of the day, I, you know, it's just a month or whatever, right? Like over a period of time, essentially, you're going to have the risk reward that's going to work in your favor. And at the end of the day, that's all it is. If you don't got the math in your favor, it doesn't matter how good of a trader you are. It doesn't matter, you know, like how good you think, like your technical analysis, fundamental analysis, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You know, if the risk reward is not there, you're going to be a total loser. And that's just reality, right? So, no, I think these are great points, Ricky. We can continue on. All right, thank you. So, Greed will touch up uh, on more. Uh, now, opposite of Greed is fear, right? Fear. You're worried about bigger losses, right? Worried about bigger losses. The only reason you will be worried about your bigger losses is because if you went in too heavy, right? If you're going in too heavy according to your size, if you have a 10K account and you went in with a, on a weekly position on a 2K, with $2,000 thinking I'm going to double this today or tomorrow or the next week, maybe you have a need, maybe you need to pay some bills, you don't have a job, I don't know, whatever it may be, right? Then that's going to make you, um, it's going to mess up your decision making, right? Let's say, for example, I'm just going to take an example here, Walmart, for example, let's say you probably bought Walmart here, right? Let's say you probably bought Walmart here and you had two weeks and as soon as it dipped below, you were now worried because that 2K, the options are volatile, from 2K, they're now worth maybe $1,400. Like, no, no, let me say this 14 bucks and now it goes back up. And now that 2K would have been 4K, you know? Now that messes you up totally because you did not manage. You did not go, go in with the right size. Position sizing is the most important part in trading or one of the most, okay? Do you act on sell-offs, right? And how do you act on sell-offs? Again, if you're in heavy, now the recent example I'll give you guys right now, and uh, this happened live, right? And we were watching it. On this sell-up the other day, news came out, uh, uh, Dudley, was it, I believe, that made comments that uh, Fed needs to raise rates or should. This right here. Did you sell off right here? Did you buy puts on this action right here? I cannot tell you how many people bought puts right here. They want, now I'm not saying they were wrong. That was a great reaction. But did you manage that trade well? Or did you hold on to it and keep on adding while the market was ripping? Right? How do you act on sell-offs? Walmart. Just back to the daily chart, I saw something. Now, Walmart, let's say somebody that bought this stock. Now, this can go for any ticker. I'm just uh, taking the highs and lows here. Let's say somebody that bought Walmart equity, for example, or bought Leaps, maybe. I don't know. Let's say you bought Walmart somewhere here in the zone thinking it's going to break out. And it does not break out. And if you're holding through this entire run down, I'm expecting you did not have a stop loss. In this, you're in for a long term. You don't care about the short term. Did you act here? Are you a guy that sells the stock right here? Are you one of those guys? Is that your mentality? Or does that happen with the most of the times that you know, a stock take a dip, you get scared, and then you stop out thinking, oh no, the monthly looks ugly now. This is what's happening. I need to stop out. The next support level is all the way down to uh, 126. And you end up stopping out here. And then from here, the stock absolutely reverses. The only reason you will stop out of here is because number one, you held on to your loser for too long. If you were gonna stop out here, if you were going to stop out here, out here, you should have stopped out right here as soon as it broke support level, right? You're, this is where technical analysis comes in. You got to be very disciplined. Forget what, what Walmart does after. You take your stop loss here and you freaking move on. Who gives a shit? Recent example, Platinum Sachs, he's on here with us right now. Um, on Amazon, I was surprised uh, he pulled, pulled that off. For me, it's very hard to do. That's why I just stick to one direction usually. Um, he had puts on Amazon. Right? He had puts on Amazon, he was writing them. And then as soon as he saw that Amazon was taking out here um, in the middle, he bought calls. He bought calls, he, he completely flipped. And when the calls did not work out, right here, right here, I know um, a minute by minute, if you're live in Discord, uh, you guys see this, he cut out his calls here, there's no momentum. He took a stop loss right here and he saved his entire portfolio. He probably gave up one, $2 against the ratio. But when he catches Amazon, he's gonna make all that back plus profits, but he did not hold on to it all the way to here. All right, he did not hold on to it all the way here. He was very disciplined with his trade. From puts, he flipped to calls, and then from calls, he bailed out. His comment was, there's no momentum, I'm gonna be out of the trade. That's called discipline, that's called experience. Right? For a new trader to do this and act upon this is very hard. And uh, Yash, congrats to you for uh, having that uh, talent. Long, for new people, it takes a long time in order to uh, get those things done, right? So um, acting on sell-offs. Threat. Does a stock, uh, do you get threatened by a stock's move, right? What do I mean by this? Let's say, for example, um, uh, just an example, 
this right here on Amazon, for example. Are you somebody that might get shook out here if you're holding at me? Oh my God, something's going to happen. I need to sell this stock and then it completely rips. Do you sell based on those things, right? Investing and trading two different things. Investment, you don't look at day to day moves. You need to put in, you need to look at fundamentals and both technicals and you look at the, you need to look at the overall market in all. There's a lot of studying involved when you're investing in stocks. It's not just something that you like. I love McDonald's, I love Amazon, fine, but I also know their growth numbers, what they're doing, right? So um, you need to know both. Um, in this, now for greed and fear, when you're making these uh, um, Goldman Sachs on fear, uh, please uh, um, give your um, shout out. Ricky, as far as fear, you know, I don't have anything uh, that I can categorize like you, but my cycle is pretty simple. Everybody goes through this and everybody that's on this call today can probably agree at some point or another you've been through this and I go through it myself you know and the cycle goes something like this okay so you start trading or whatever you've been trading doesn't really matter right we are trading you do well you feel on top of the world you feel like the smartest guy start doing crazy shit you start taking positions that are too big and it still works out it's still paying you right everything is going well and again, every day you just feel on top of the world, right? Invincible. Nobody can bring you down. And then boom, comes along a loser. Now, when that loser comes, you say to yourself, ah, this is nothing. You know, it's going to pull back. It's going to keep on going. So I'm, I'm going to give it some time, right? Um, so you give it time and then now it turns into a bigger loser. And you're like, shit, no, it's way too big. So I'm just going to keep it. And then it goes to zero, right? Now, now you're in the fear part of the cycle. So all of a sudden... You go from being, you know, on top of the world to being depressed. And every time now you look at the markets, you doubt yourself, you doubt everything. You doubt that, you know, can I even make money? Like everything that you do is just doubt, right? So that's that's basically all I have to say as far as, you know, like fear and greed. Like that's, that's as simple as it is. Everybody just goes through these cycles. The point is, you know, instead of going through the highs and the lows, just be somewhere in between at all times. Um, and, you know, in order to do that, you just got to trade in a way that, you know, your heart rate is not going through the roof, right? I mean, just, you just got to trade in a way that every uptake, every downtake, like it doesn't matter, right? Give the market some room, have, you know, have set risk parameters. And that's it. It's as simple as that, right? There's nothing more, nothing less. Right. Um, thank you, Sex. Another uh, thing, your behavior in the market. Now, one thing that uh, a lot of you guys call for trade, not a lot of you guys, I mean, some of you guys, um, you know, we teach you guys a lot of um, uh, discipline. We do pre and post market. We daily remind you on uh, risk managing, right? Uh, risk management. We teach you this every day almost. Um, I don't know if anybody else puts in so much work in risk management as much as we um, tell you guys, right? And that's the reason we're able to stay so calm. Even if Amazon goes to ship tomorrow, like, you know, I don't care. Yes, I'm a little heavy, but as I expect it, that's fine, right? Uh, one thing, herd, herd behavior. Now, what is herd behavior, right? Uh, let's say, for example, Goldman Sachs buys Amazon calls. Ricky also buys Amazon calls. Maybe LB buys, maybe T buys. I don't know, four of us buy. That probably, fine, we're experienced traders. That, you know, is more, the conviction is the upside. You guys might be like, you know what, these guys are buying. And now, cool guy, Ricky, gosh, they come and they buy Amazon. Are you somebody that's sitting there thinking, man, these guys went in Amazon, something's up with Amazon, I'm gonna go in Amazon too. Are you buying Amazon without even looking at the chart? Do you agree with our move? Do you, right? Now in this um, uh, action, me and Sachs were completely opposite against each other uh, here, right? Neither was one, it wasn't about that, but I saw something else, he saw something else. I stuck to my plan. On this big red day, a lot of guys uh, most sold, I stuck to my plan, right? I stuck to my plan, I looked at my different price levels, and my own analysis, right? Now, many of you guys, are you buying options? Are you buying stocks? Because the group of people in the group are adding. When somebody says an alert and 10 people follow, are you the 11th person that didn't even look at the chart? You just bought it without any idea? If that's a yes, stop it immediately. If somebody buys something, that's just information. Do not take as financial advice. What you do is you look at the chart also. Maybe it was something that you like. Let's say, for example, DKMG today. I wanted to get in this chart. I wanted to get in, right? I was waiting. 
And then T uh, and Boogie, I think they had a small position. I looked at it, I'm like, you know what? I also agree with this trade. I like this trade. You know what? I like this trade. I'm probably going to buy a small too. I did not follow them. I liked the trade with them. I agreed with them. That's why I brought a position in DKNG, but I did not blindly follow them. Okay. LC, LB kept telling me, buy, buy, buy. Great move. I did not buy. He's, he used to sit right beside me. I'm like, no, I don't know anything about the company. Why am I going to buy? And you know what? I missed this entire move and I don't regret it. I don't care because I don't know anything about the company. Why am I just going to follow into trade, which I have no idea about? He spent hours and days. It's good information. What I could have done was done my own research and maybe then joined him. All right. Um, LBS, another trade example, right? Um, they, they bought in here. I agreed with them. I'm like, you know what, man? I like this trade too, right? Um, they're in it. It gives me um, something I might now see things. I was not looking at LBS at all. But he was looking at LBS and I'm like, you know what, let me look at the chart too. And I agreed with him. I bought a position on Friday and Monday. I took my profits. Simple, right? And our exits were all at different prices. So, um, you know, we don't wait for each other's exit. Many people in the group ask, did you sell? Did you sell? Did you sell? Why do you care if I sold? Who gives a shit? I don't want to sell. I'm not going to sell. I want, I want my position to go to zero. How about you, right? Herd behavior, if that's your, if that's, if you're part of this at any time, if you're buying option and calls because somebody else is buying, it's going to cost you in the future because you don't know how they're managing. You have no idea what their account is at and how much they bought. Maybe they have a, they have $10,000. They only bought hundred dollars worth. Now you with a 10 K account, you probably put in two K. You understand, right? Maybe for them, that hundred can go to zero, but can that two K go to zero for you? So any trade that we enter, anything that we buy, you must also agree, create as information and see if you agree with it and see if it fits your criteria of uh, stocks, uh, direction, whatever it may be. And you can act upon it. All right, uh, Goldman Sachs, um, uh, herd behavior. I know this is uh, very big in the market. A lot of people on Twitter follow each other. And then, you know, what do you have to say on this? As far as this, one word that comes to mind is, you know, being accountable, right? And being accountable means a lot of things to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. But in this particular scenario, being accountable, you know, in trading, you don't have a boss, right? Let, let's say you go to work. Let's say you work for a company and you have a boss, you have a manager, you have a supervisor, whoever, right? And you do something stupid and that costs the money a lot of money, right? You think your boss is just gonna let it slide, right? No, he's not. But in trading, there's no one to keep you accountable. So a lot of times you're the one that's gotta keep yourself accountable. You do a lot of things that you wouldn't otherwise do, right? So I think just being accountable goes a long way and it kind of puts, you know, all of these things in order and helps you, you know, avoid falling in these traps essentially, right? Uh, and just blindly following something. I mean, I see it all the time, right? People ask me all the time and I post snarky comments about them in the, in the chat, you know, but it's, that's, that's all it is, right? You just got to manage it in a way that works, works for you, right? You don't got to do something just because, someone else is doing something, right? If it makes sense for you, if you think, you know, the thoughts align, you're seeing the same things, there's a way that you can manage it. If things were to go south, then, you know, then you do it, right? And that's the first thing I always look at. You know, most people, when they look at something, when something gets brought up, they, they only look at the upside. They say, oh, I can make 100%, 50%, 1000%, whatever, right? They only look at the upside. Nobody says, what's my risk? Like, what am I willing to risk to make that, right? For me, it's, it's the total opposite. Like, I need to know where I'm wrong. I don't need to worry about, like, if I'm going to be right. If I'm going to be right, everything's going to take care of itself. It's only if I'm wrong that I need to intervene and, you know, get myself out. If things are going well, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine, right? So I think just keeping that in mind and, you know, everyone holding themselves accountable for everything that you do every day that you come in the markets uh, goes a long way. Right. I mean, uh, build your confidence, do your technical analysis, do your tech, work on your technicals, work on your fundamentals. Trading requires a lot of work. There's a lot of homework to do after hours. It, it's up to you how big your dreams are, how big your goals are, what money you're looking to make. Or are you somebody that is wakes up at 9.30, the trades for half an hour, goes at four? Yes, there exist people like that. I can do that. That's actually very easy. But for that, you need experience, years and years of experience to understand that, okay, you know what? Um, I just look at the market half an hour, trade. Yes, that's what I want to do in the future too. But that takes a lot of experience. But build your confidence, study your technicals, look at the fundamentals, understand the markets, look at the schedule. What Cal is, what news might be coming up in the next week, right? Next. 
emotional behavior. Do you have any of these when you create, right? Anxiety, anger, revenge. Oh, what else do I have written down? Fear, recovered, greed, recovered, right? You get too excited, too fast, right? FOMO. If any of these emotional, uh, these kick in everyone. Some of these kick in me too. I mean, this is, we're born with this. We can't really take it out. What we can do is only control it or understand when it comes to stay away from the trade. Do you get anxiety when you enter trade? That just simply means that, you know what? Maybe you're in too heavy. You went in too heavy. You shouldn't have. Now you're worried. All right. You don't know what's happening in the market or you should have just stayed on the sidelines. Anger. Once you're in a trade and it goes against you, does it make you angry? Did Jumia make you angry today if you were in short term? Right. Um, because it was a big dip or Twitter, for example, Twitter, I have leaves, for example, let's go over Twitter. My, I'll go over my own example. Well, I'm in both. How sad. <laughs> I'm in both. How sad, right? <laughs> but uh, Twitter, this, uh, I have leaves. They're up nice. I bought 2023. Now here, I accept 2023. Why did I buy 2023 $70 call? I'll explain my thinking. Why did I buy 70 2023? You know why? Because I was already expecting downside in the 50s in case if it fails here and comes to 50s. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. But many of you guys that did not expect downside, or this is somebody that brought in in the initial stages of my career. Um, a few years ago, I bought Twitter here. Here, I would be angry. I, I'd be revenge trading. because I, I try to buy this dip. I would try to buy the dip, right? I would maybe hit the wall that, you know what? It needs to go up. I would be looking at it every day. I don't even look at Twitter no more. I have my alert set about $60 that day it hits. I'll look at Twitter. I don't even care what it does here. It's 2023. Sometimes it does not go against you. Um, the trade goes against you for short term. But because I bought Leap, I was able to control my emotions, whatever it may be. I'm very confident for in Twitter. And I promise you, in a few months, I'll manage it so well, I'll exit like green on Twitter. AMD, for example, I had to hold through this. You know, some guy, he was in our premium uh, chat. He was in our premium back in uh, early Jan, uh, Feb, when we started. He was with us, right? I alerted the entire article. I actually wrote up a proper analysis of that. You know, why am I buying AMD leads right here? I bought the hundred dollar leads at eighteen dollars. No, sorry, twenty two bucks. I held through this entire freaking move, and trust me, it was painful, right? But you know what? I was okay because I had until two thousand twenty three, right? It kept. I was. I wanted to add some here. I did not add at that time. Like you know, let me just see because uh, I was heavily invested in Baba as well, so I did not want to average down here. Right, because because of Baba, I freaking did not buy more AMD. Right, so my emotions got involved there. But you know what? It was the right decision. That's fine. But AMD soon after ripped, and this guy who bought AMD leaves with me here. He held them and he thanked me right here. He thanked me, and then T's brother was holding AMD leaves. He just sold them last week right here, and he only sold one third. He messaged me after how many months? After eleven months. That T, uh, Ricky, what should I do with my leaves? And I was surprised. I'm like, wow, right? So sometimes leaves they don't work out initially but that's the reason we buy leaves because you understand you know what it might take a while to work out we expect downside now jumia for example my recent leap play right it was my first scaling in my comment why was it my first scaling right the reason it was my first scaling because i was expecting downside and that's exactly what happened now in the next one two months i want to see jumia and if it takes up 19 you know what if my need leaves are trading below i will average down and i'll play i will play this to the upside but until then, I'm holding it comfortably. I'm not too worried. For me, it's like an asset. It's like an equity position. All right. You manage yours. Are you revenge trading? Right. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, since I have Jumia open, right? Uh, Jumia, you bought Jumia here. Now, or maybe you bought Jumia um, here in the middle, for example. And just an example. Um, I know some people trade in the group. It's not again. I'm just an example. Now it's down. Are you going to revenge trade this? Are you going to like, you know what? I lost on this. Let me wait until Jumia. Let me wait until Jumia. I'm going to buy Jumia. I'm going to buy Jumia. Or a perfect, another stock is DKNG, for example. A lot of people in the market are probably revenge trading this. They're probably trying to cash each and every single dip here. First, they probably tried catching this because they bought DKNG here. Then they tried catching it here. Then they tried. Why are you doing this? Once you enter options position right here, that's one trade. Any other trade is a separate trade. Instead of average now, you know, I mean, um, if you're revenge trading it now that I need to make money on this stock, stock it's gonna murder you, trust me. It's gonna kill you. And that revenge trade is gonna take away from your account. It will, trust me on this. You can ask Darsh, you can ask T, it will take away from you. Revenge trading, uh, many experienced traders will do it. Sometimes I wanna do it, right? With Amazon, but I don't do it, right? Amazon, for my recent example, for example, uh, you know, uh, when uh, Goldman Sachs bought puts here, I didn't uh, you know, I was like, man, why would he buy puts? It's such a um, strong uptrend, right? He had his own analysis. But that information from him, I did not buy puts with him, but I stayed calm. I did not add more Amazon. I wanted to, 
I did not add more Amazon because I was like, you know, he's explaining, he probably sees something. So the information he provided that he bought puts, I did not buy puts, but I took it as information and I stayed calm through this entire move. Like, no, I'm gonna let my levels play out. I will, I, based on his information, I just won't add any. I am better to keep my cash. I'd rather miss a trade, that's fine. Okay, just an example. Fear, we covered. Greed, we covered. Do you get too excited when you're in calls? Right, some of you guys, you guys get way too excited uh, when you guys make money. If you have a 50K account, or if you have a 10K account and you make 20, 30K in a week, I understand your excitement. That's amazing. Congrats. You should be excited. But if you're getting excited constantly in the market, that means your, your emotions to the downside will also be involved. And that's not good. Right? So control your emotions. Stay humble. Stay humble is a big tip for you guys. Stay humble. Control your emotions always. Fear of missing out. As soon as you feel that you need to get into a trade because it's going, it's going, it's going. You know what? Just stay out, go take a walk. You would rather miss that trade. Trust me and long term you'll protect yourself. Goldman Sachs, uh, emotional behavior. And uh, once again, these are great points. And by the way, Ricky, I love revenge trading. It's probably my favorite thing to do. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you know, these, these are all solid points that he makes. I think, you know, people should, instead of focusing on, um, the literal examples he's giving, a, you know, I think Ricky's just trying to show you all the different angles, right? So I think people should look at it from that perspective and not the literal examples, you know, words he's using, but they're just great examples as to, you know, what a bad habit can turn into, right? So I think that's, that's the biggest point being made is, you know, like have good habits, have something in place that is going to make sure that, you know, you try to avoid the traps the best as you can. And the thing is, I mean, everybody's human at the end of the day. Nobody's perfect. You know, like if me, Ricky, anybody says, you know, like I'm perfect and I can do everything, it's not the case. And, you know, I don't think anyone should aim for to be the perfect trader because no such thing exists. But what you can do is, you know, these are all tools and tips and tricks that we've learned over the years and, you know, we're just sharing with you and I'm sure a lot of you can also relate because you experienced a lot of these things and that's all it is you know it's just a constant learning process right and it's just how you evolve right over over a period of time so I think that's that's pretty much it and just using you know some guidelines like Ricky's sharing here to help you achieve you know whatever that goal may be for you right whether it's just being consistent, making X amount of dollars or whatever it may be, right? You can do it. It's just, you need to approach it from, from an angle where you have something in place to manage your risk rather than, you know, just, just doing something because you think it's going to go up right or down. Right. Thank you, Sax. And um, are you always smart? In the market, do you think you're, you're always going to be right? And if that's something, then just work on it, right? It's good to accept mistakes, right? Stay disciplined, uh, work on your technical and fundamental analysis, like we said, and do your homework, do research, look at the news every day and see what's happening in the market. And, um, you know, guys, that's 740, so I think that's good. I think we only covered maybe half of a percent or 1% of the psychology stuff. The rest, it takes many years. So read books, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, from here, we'll start the Q&A. If you guys have any questions, uh, me and Darsh are here. We can answer from our experience and hopefully um, we can help. So any questions, just type in. And um, Yeah, and while people type, uh, if they have any questions, I did share a book a while back, you know, Being Right or Making Money. It's, it's a pretty deep book. Uh, it's going to go over almost everybody's head in here because most people are just not, you know, they're not from that level of trading. But I think it's a really good read. Um, you should check it out here. Maybe I'll post it in the group again. Uh, let's see. Has any, did anybody read that book? The one that you oh. posted one time? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah. I did start it. I think I did, uh, but I don't know the name of it. Yeah, so. um, I just posted the book again. Okay, the large yeah. the book. Yeah, like I said, it's a pretty deep book, especially if you're new, but it doesn't matter. Just read it. If it doesn't make sense the first time, read it five times. Who cares, right? Trading in the Zone is a good book. Uh, T just recommended one. 
Yeah, so from trading in the zone, what I have on my screen, like one part of my screen, I have this here, I'll uh, I just posted a screenshot of it in, uh, in the Discord. So that's what I have on my screen. Maybe Ricky, if you can see it in the Discord, maybe you can pull it up. You are not okay. there. Hold on. Being right in, uh, making money. No, I posted a screenshot in Discord. Ah, uh, okay, I see what you're saying. And it's essentially the main lessons from uh, trading in the zone. Okay. That's, that's pretty much what the book talks about. Yeah, so if you're in our premium Discord, uh, you can see it. And, uh, and you know, we know we'll post this in the pre-chat as well. So you can see it there as well. And both books should always be free. Uh, Self-development, guys, read books, work on yourself, right? That's all we can say. And um, understand yourself as a creator, recognize yourself, right? The mistakes that you may be making or what you might be a victim of. Um, work on those things. Um, Key, anything else that you want to share, maybe? Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. I think that was good 40 minutes. That was uh, very useful. Uh, thank the you. Last, yeah, Ricky, the last thing I'll say is like, don't try to do everything at once. You know, pick one thing, figure out for everybody it's different. Some people have, you know, more greed than others. Some have more fear than others. Figure out whatever that thing is for you. Like pick one thing work on that, the better you get at it, then say, okay, what's next? And then, you know, take it step by step because, you know, you, you gotta just take small bites and digest it, right? You, you can't just swallow the whole burger. You're probably gonna be sick, right? So just take small steps, do one thing at a time. It's gonna take time, but that's fine. You know, you're not in a rush to go anywhere. So just, that, that would be my only advice is whatever you do, do it properly, do it over a period of time, do it slowly. Andrew's asking a question. Um, when to put a stop loss on a trade, right? Um, one, let's just say 20% same day, I get knocked out. Uh, see, Andrew, a stop loss is very tricky. Now, are you trading equity? Are you trading options? Are you trading weekly options? Are you trading leaps, right? It all depends, it all depends. I mean, if you're trading equity, for example, I'll just write that down here. If you're trading equity, if you're trading equity, just for example, right, and Lars, you can just share, share your um, uh, views on this. Let's say the current price is $10, right? And uh, your target is, uh, let's say, for example, let's say your target is $10 and 50 cents, okay? Your stop loss here will be very tight. My stop loss personally will be $9 and 10, um, $9.90, why? Right, that's my number one. Let's say if your target is twelve dollars, my stop loss may be nine dollars and forty cents or so. Why such a difference? Because there's something called ratio. Is that ratio in your favor if you're making five trades or if you're making four trades? And if you're making four trades and you're picky with your trades, right, right here. If you're being picky with your trades, then you should be right in most of your trades. Here's the reason I'm going to do my stop loss at ten cents only is because your target is only 1050. So I'm only going to lose 10 cents for 50 cents. But here, if my target is $12 on a $10 stock, then maybe I'll take my stop loss a little below, well, maybe not 940, I'm just uh, 960, I would say, right? And still keep my ratio five to one or so, right? Or four to one, making sense? My stop loss will be bigger if my target is bigger, okay? And sometimes then you will also look at the, so that's how you would uh, put, uh, figure out your stop losses. Your ratio should be in your favor. So then out of your five trades that you do, let's say three or two go wrong, but the other two that work in your favor, they leave you with net profits overall for the day or for the week or for the month, whatever it may be. And for options, usually um, if you're playing options, for example, because they move a lot. So I'll just give you the last example uh, from our room today, right? Um, it was very simple. Right. And in this, it depends on this was a, a day trade or a weekly trade, you can say, right? Calls were brought, uh, calls were bought around this area, I believe, right? But as soon as Amazon did not break out here and then it came here, 
it broke below. There's a five minute chart, right? We respected the stop loss. And you know what? We took, we, we stopped out. We took a stop loss right here. And then we avoided this entire move. Maybe after the stop loss, it was going to rip. Who cares? Then you miss it. That's as simple as then you miss the trade. But at least you save your money. You don't get stuck in here. Then you can still have the same amount to jump in the next trade or let the stock work um, chart settle, right? So stop loss is, I mean, stop loss is actually a learning game. It takes a long time to understand stop losses as well. Are you trading off equity options? Then are you swing trading it? Are you day trading it? So many questions to ask. Um, anything you want to add on to this? Ash? Yeah, I mean, as far as stop losses go, so I am like the uh, total opposite of everything Ricky said is this is not how I operate. Um, the way I operate is, you know, I have areas, levels in mind that I use to lean against. Okay. And I use my risk from there. Let's say, you know, I want to get long, but the actual invalidation point of that trade, it's not going to be just 10% or 20%. You know, it's not just random numbers or random dollar amounts because the reality is the market doesn't care about your 20% stop loss or, you know, five, 10, 50, whatever percent or dollar amount your stop loss. The market doesn't care. The market, you know, there's an auction going on and based on levels and things like that, you know, that's what the market's going to respect. It's not going to respect where your stop loss is, right? So I use market structure to have areas, like for example, you know, the 35, 25 to 26, I even wrote it yesterday. I said, if it breaks, that's why everything I write is always if, you know, till it breaks, it's, it's an if. And that's the way I operate from. So for me, it didn't break and we got that strong bounce. And that was like, for example, that was a stop loss. But that's, you know, a really odd stop loss and it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but that was a stop loss. So that's what I use. I love, I use levels to lean against. And then what I do is because those levels, sometimes they can be really close. Sometimes it can be really wide. So in, how do you manage that? You know, so I use fixed dollar risk in order to make sure that my dollar risk that I'm taking is always the same. Sometimes I may have 20 contracts. Sometimes I may have 200 contracts. But my dollar risk that I'm willing to risk on that trade is, is all the same. So that's, that's how I personally do it. And, you know, when I was at the firm, that's, that's how all the professionals do it. We do, like, there's no set dollar risk or percent risk or anything that we use. We use it based on market structure. All right, so thank you, Dash. So he gave even a detailed answer. So I hope uh, that um, he, from a different point of view, so I hope that also helps. And uh, are there stop loss rates? Find that a thing. Uh, yeah, T, I was gonna bring you on for this. You wanna come? <laughs> so T is experienced this. And, uh, so I'll let T speak on this. And then- Yeah, stop loss rates are a thing. <laughs> like market makers can see sometimes where people are heavily positioned and they have lost a certain place. Just take Mod uh, Moderna for, for an example today. You guys see, we entered that trade yesterday. They probably see, saw a lot of call volume that went into the options for this week or next week. And they knew there's a lot of people that were looking for a move to the upside. So what did they do? What did they do? They released an article this morning. People probably got scared. You know, a lot of stops were taken out and they took it right back up. So yes, it happens, has happened to me. That's kind of how I got into the markets. I took a big, I got raided. It's called a bear raid sometimes. So it does happen. I think mental stops are much better than having actual stop losses. Like I think that's what Darsh does whenever he, like most of us do that. You have a certain area you want to you know you're like if it goes below that i'm going to stop out but you actually putting the stop there sometimes you might have a move in the spy everything might just flash down for a bit you're going to get stopped out so always have a mental stop is what i i would recommend personally so but it does happen another thing i think that wasn't covered is external factors can also have an impact on your performance in the map in the markets like let's say you had a bad day at work or, you know, you're going to go argue with your girlfriend or like your spouse or something. And then you're coming, you want to fight. Having a clear mind in the markets is very important. You know, let's say you wake up, you had a bad night, you, you went to sleep late, you wake up and all of a sudden you, you just jump on like a 925 and you think you're going to make the trades today. You didn't get that time to do the, the mental prep work before time. So those things I feel are very important when you're trading, having a clear mind makes a huge difference. Yeah, hundred percent. And Ricky, as far as stop rates in the Amazon chart that you had the five minute, if you go back to it, I was actually in that position on um, last, if you pull up the five, if you go back on the five minute, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. 
Can't remember what day it was. Was it Thursday? It was on the 10th. Ricky, if you go on the five minute. So yeah, see that spike there? Right here, a little bit over to the left. Yeah, that spike above that prior high. If you remember, I had puts there. Do you guys remember that trade? And, you know, I even wrote in the group, I said it needs to break and hold. So everybody and their mother got excited when it got above and everybody was shouting and jumping. And then, yeah, everybody was sad a couple of minutes later. But yeah, that, that's, that's an example, right? And so, I'll, I'll share it from another angle. So retail looks at it as stop hunts, whereas institutional operates from the perspective, see like me, you, you know, whoever, T, Ricky, whoever, like we only, we can only trade so big, okay? Like do we trade big? Sure. But like we don't, we don't trade like a bank, okay? Like institutional guys or big firm or a hedge fund, whatever. These guys, they do a totally different thing. And, you know, the sizes sometimes they trade, they need a lot of liquidity. So what the markets do is they take liquidity from anybody that really just doesn't know how to trade, okay? It's as simple as that. And that's that's all it is. So that's why a lot of times you see it goes through and it comes back because they just need the liquidity. And that's what the market's always trying to do uh, in one form, shape or another is you know creating such structure so that it can gather liquidity. And then it has that liquidity when it makes the move. So that's another you know, point of view. Um, and, and it is a reality, you know, like people do it. Like I know guys, you know, in the S&Ps that back in the day, you know, they would push price to a certain point. Everybody stops with trigger just so their orders would fill. And then the market will go back to normal. So it does happen. Some great points by Darsh and Peter. Hope you guys took notes. And uh, anything else that you guys want to add on, guys? Yeah, I think being prepared, like the day before, going over your charts, being like, hey, these are the charts I'm looking at. These are the things that I'm. Um, you know, being prepared the day before also makes a big difference. If you do your homework, you'll have more success versus just going there and just trying to blindly, just trying to catch trades. So that also makes a difference. So the more work you put into it, the more you get out of it. If you feel like you're just going to jump in there for like a couple of hours and hopefully, you know, make a quick trade. Yes, you'll get lucky. You'll be able to do it. But the more time you put into it, the more you get out of it. So yep, um, work as guys must, uh, gotta put in work, we always say. Um, right, are you somebody that just wakes up at 9.30 and comes and I look in the markets or uh, unless you want to sleep late, I understand, but uh, um, but yeah, so more work research, better results, right? And uh, yeah, and uh, some other things I do want, do want to cover, uh, uh, losers, winners, maybe in the next session we'll cover them. But uh, we do recommend, please read books and come prepared for tomorrow, right? Be online early if you don't work. And uh, that's pretty much it from my side. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Darsh, for your expertise with, with your great uh, info. Thank you, T. And uh, I hope we were able to help you guys. All right, awesome guys. We'll catch you tomorrow, get some rest. And uh, yeah, hopefully there's some action tomorrow.